Well, hello and welcome back here to Everlasting Summer. Now, in the last episode, we have realised that we actually jumped tracks due to a bug or something or other. And we weren't going to get the ending we were expecting to get. But, I have to be honest with you, what happened to us was fascinating. Ended up having a conversation with another pioneer who looks suspiciously like ourselves. And talking about how you may never leave was so very, very true. The bright sunlight was striking my eyes even through my eyelids. I stretched out lazily and quickly got myself out of bed. It was 2 p.m. Looks like yesterday really finished me off and my body required much more time to recover than usual. I had a stroll around the room thinking about what I should do today. Obviously my life in the camp would never be the same again after everything I'd heard from that strange pioneer. And if everything's just as he said, I've got plenty of time ahead. I grabbed my hygiene kit and went outside. I managed to take only a couple of steps as somebody ran into my back. I turned around and saw Elisa. Hey, be careful! She said indifferently and ran on her way. She held some kind of bag in her hands. Ah, whatever. Yet another ordinary day in this crazy place. I finished brushing my teeth and spent an eternity washing my face with the ice-cold water to bring myself to my senses and refresh my head at least a little bit. I felt bit, a bit better after that. Suddenly, hope struck me from nowhere. It wasn't a hope that I'd be likely to leave this place safely. Rather, I didn't want to believe that everything is as bad as that guy told me. Good morning. I heard a faint voice coming from the woods. Someone stood behind a tree. Morning. Are you ready? Ready for what? I looked again and it seemed like it was the pioneer for the bus stop yesterday. Indeed, I was prepared for such weirdness today, so it wasn't really so I wasn't really surprised and started this conversation quite clear headed. You didn't believe him, did you? What are you talking about? Everything that he said. All right, but what's your opinion on what is happening? I'd already distanced myself from the outside world and decided to treat everything happening to me just like a fictional film, not reality. Hopefully, it will give me more room to move around in terms of situational logic analysis. There's an exit. There has to be, he said excitedly. I don't know, but I'd like to believe that too. If you'd just... Samyen! I turned around. Slavia was standing right next to me. Who are you talking to? Um, no one. Just talking to myself. I hardly think it's worth telling her about aliens from parallel worlds. She probably can't even see them anyway. She's probably never seen her toes. Have you prepared already? Prepared for another hike? No! Today's the last day of the session. What? A stupid smile settled on my face. There'll be a bus this evening. We're leaving. Holy cow. I was ready for even the most incredible of twists, but... Was this what that mysterious pioneer was talking about? Probably it was. Well, apparently I'd have to go for a second lap and live yet another week in this camp. But this time... I know everything. No, I haven't packed yet. It's not like I have much to pack anyway. Okay. Slavia shifted her gaze. Seemed like she wanted to say something, but hesitated. Where? Well, see you then. Yeah. I had to ask when we're leaving at least. 
I went to the square with the intention of discovering that. There's got to be someone I know there. But, believe it or not, only Jendo was waiting for me at the square. Probably all the pioneers are busy with packing. I took a seat on the bench and stared at the sky. It turns out that today I just have to wait for the departure, pass out onto the bus and wake up in this camp again, just like the first day. Everything was drowning in silence. It's exactly that time, time of a Sunday day when the sun seems stuck in the sky. The birds and the crickets have gone for an after-lunch doze and the wind is saving its energy to deliver a long-awaited coolness to people in the evening. It suddenly crossed my mind that I haven't just missed lunch, but I haven't had any breakfast either. It was ridiculous to search for anything in the canteen. The pioneers had surely cleared up everything just before the departure. I scratched my head and made my way to Olga's cabin. Surely there would be something edible on in the table's drawer. Someone called for me just as I approached the door. Shurik and Electronics swiftly approached the cabin. Are you already packed up? Already packed up, I answered, imitating him. You haven't quite been yourself for the last few days. What makes you say that? How should I know? You'd know better. I mean, why are you so concerned? No reason, big boy. A real pioneer always treats a common age problems as his own. I cast a sceptical look at him. Thanks for your concern. I'm fine. There actually was half a, bar a loaf of stale bread and a piece of smoked sausage in the drawer. I've ate everything. I've ate everything with deliberate pleasure, washing it down with smelly water that Ogwa probably used to water the plants. Just as I finished, someone started knocking at the door. Come in. Yelana rushed into the room. Ugh. It's just you, she said disappointedly. And who did you expect to see? A circus complete with bears? Yelana giggled. Where's Olga? I don't know, I shrugged. Why not? I don't know, because I don't know. What do you want from her anyway? Got to ask something before the departure. Okay, I'll tell her that you were searching for her if I see her. By the way, why aren't you packing up? Like I have much to pack. Well, see you. She cracked a sly smile and bounded out of the cabin, slamming the door behind her. And still, it's really strange that nobody seems to be puzzled by the sudden departure. And why am, the on am I the only one who was not expecting it? Like everyone really cares if I've, I've packed my things up. Well, as well as, doesn't anyone care that this is the last time we'll be seeing each other? The words of that guy in the forest yesterday about all the camp's tenants being unreal suddenly sprang into my mind. Well, right now I'm more than ready to believe it than ever. The desk drawer where I found my breakfast contained lots of odds and ends. I grabbed a pencil and a piece of paper, examined them for some time and then slipped them into my pocket, just in case. I had no intention of watching over all the pioneers rushing around and packing, so I just lay on my bed and didn't even notice how I dozed off. It was somebody's voice that woke me up. A familiar pioneer was sitting directly opposite, with his back to me. I'd gotten used to him a bit since yesterday, and it even seemed that I'd stopped fearing him. Hey, why do you always hide your face? Because you shouldn't see it. If you say so. I wasn't in a position to argue. So, what are you going to reveal this time? 
You already know it's the last day of a session, don't you? Yep. And you've already spoken with that one? Yep. So, what did he tell you? Nothing special. He said that there's an exit out of here. The pioneer burst into laughter. Yeah, I believed that too, ages ago. And now? And what is? Now? I have my past? My life back then? He stopped talking for some time. Anyway, it's always a long while ago, so I don't really remember. The future is all the same. Loops and loops and loops. Repetitions of the same story. Where is now? Well, I hate to say it, but I'm not yet as lost in time as you are. Oh, that's nothing. That'll come in time. He broke into diabolic laughter. <laughs> or something like that. There's just one thing I don't understand. What's your reason for coming to me? What do you expect to achieve? Me? Nothing really. So why did you come then? It's because you, him, and others like us are the only real people around here. Given everything he'd said to me already, I just wasn't ready to believe that all the local tenants are just puppets in some kind of hellish stage play. Are you sure that you're right? Right about what? Well, that you're right about everything. I can't be right or wrong. I didn't choose this world. I didn't throw myself into it. I'm just here. And you're just here. Listen, I've already got a headache from your philosophizing. I was kind of puzzled myself as to why I was so calm talking to this mysterious pioneer. Well, here it is, right in front of me. All the fantasy and devilry that's happened in this camp. Here it is, an explanation, at least a partial one, for how I got here. Here they are, the answers I've searched for such a long time. On the other hand, my behaviour was quite logical. While I couldn't quite explain what was happening, this cuckoo guy just talked and talked, but it's not like his words changed anything. Then what's the point of listening to him? Oh no, you'll soon understand everything yourself. Somebody was knocking at the door. I got up to open it. It was Slavia on the doorstep. You came to see Olga? No! Come in then. I was 100% sure that the pioneer had already disappeared. Turned out I was right. Slavia took a seat on the bed and I snuggled against the wardrobe in the far corner of the room. She was distinctly nervous. Did something happen? Not really, it's just today's the last day. Well, I'm already aware. Better late than never. Well, so I thought, I mean, we probably won't see each other ever again. It's a small world, as they say. But maybe you'd give me your address to write letters. I would have, if I only knew it myself. You know, Let's do it the other way round. You give me your address, and I'll definitely write to you upon arrival. But why don't you want to give out yours? Well, we were just about to move, so you never know. It's better if I write to you. I tried to put on my cutest smile and make my story look more credible. Okay, it's fine then. Slavia got up and seemed to be leaving. Hey, wait, what about the address? Let's do it later. An expression of sorrow and disappointment crossed her face. I just shut the door and right then heard the spiteful voice of the pioneer from behind. Well, happy now? You hurt a girl. What have I hurt her with? What should I have said to her? My dear, write to my dear granny in the village. Or, I should have left her the address of a house that's probably not even built yet? So what? I'm not my brother's keeper. It's your world, not mine. 
I'll manage somehow on my own. That last phrase made me squirm. You know what? I didn't manage to finish the phrase. Someone was knocking on the door again. Come in! Yolana flew into the cabin. Why the rush, milady? I made an excessively showy bow. Me? I'm just... Her eyes darted about curiously, and her cheeks were blushed. I just wanted to say goodbye. There'll be time for that anyway. After all, we're all going on the same bus. Yeah, you're right, but it's kind of embarrassing to say it in front of everyone. Oh, so there is something that you can be embarrassed by? I laughed. Um, she pouted. I just wanted to tell you that you aren't a douche, really. In fact, you're almost a cool guy. Her words astonished me. Well, thanks. You're good to hang out with, too. Well, that's that. She rushed outside, slamming the door loudly. Hey, didn't expect that from her. Did you? I got nothing to do with that, I told you. It really looks like you knew exactly what she will say. Maybe I did. Maybe not. You just came here to mock me? I started to lose my temper. That idea had also crossed my mind. Then why the hell are you hanging around here? If I ever need a, need a man to comment on all my actions, I'll hire a professional psychologist. You should think after all this time I don't qualify as one. My estimation is that after all this time you're almost definitely gone bananas. All psychologists are freaks. Yes, but not all freaks are psychologists. He laughed out loud. A sense of humour! How encouraging! Frankly, your jokes are fairly lame. Who are you laughing at? At yourself? Listen, if you've got nothing to do in our world, uh, go and bug that second one. And have you got anything to do in your world? The pioneer sharply countered. You know, I'll find out what to do. I'll pack my things, leave this camp. And then what? Then what? Like I know. I've never been in such a situation before, believe it or not. It's just that you've forgotten that you won't be able to leave the camp. I told you so. Yeah, he was right in this matter. Probably. Just because you failed to do so doesn't mean that I will fail too. You're the boss. There was a knocking at the door. Kel surprise. So quiet that I barely heard it. Damn, who else is it? I hissed under my breath and shouted, Come in! But the door didn't open. So I pulled the handle myself. Lena was on the doorstep. It looks like I really scared her. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. You've come to see Olga? No. She said, staring at the ground. So what is it then? What did Lena want from me? Come in. She came in and hesitated in the middle of the room. Want to take a seat? I pointed at one of the beds. Lena hesitated a bit more, but nevertheless took a seat. Did something happen? Not at all, it's just... She threw a quick glance at me, and but blushed at once and looked away. Here. Lena took something out of her pocket and handed it to me. I was stunned. It was my phone. But where did you get it from? I found it at the forest. Okay, but why do you think it's mine? Some boy told me so. Have you seen him before? I don't know. I couldn't see his face, but he was dressed in a pioneer uniform. Everything was clear at once. So you don't wonder what it is? I looked at the screen. There was some battery left, therefore the cell phone shouldn't just like a piece of plastic to Lena. 
I don't know, some kind of game. Yeah, you're right. I quickly opened Snake in the menu and handed the phone to her. There you go, a keepsake. Oh, what are you doing? I can't. Lena waved her hands at me. Take it, I've got loads of these at home. She resisted a bit more, but finally she took the device. And what do I do with it? Press the keys to move left and right. You've got to eat those pellets and keep from hitting your own tail. Oh, it's so interesting, she smiled. Thank you, and yet I've got nothing for you. It's so embarrassing. You don't need anything, thanks. No, that's not good, she said with a voice that sounded more confident than usual. It's the last day, after all. Yeah. I hope we'll meet again. I think we will. Then I have a present for you. And what is it? Close your eyes. I did so. And promise that you won't open them until I tell you. Okay. No, you have to promise. All right, I promise. In a moment, I felt a light kiss on my cheek. I was really eager to open my eyes, but I promised. Open. The room was empty. What a girl. The only thing I managed to say. Sir, how does it feel, stud? I heard malicious laughter from the place where Lena had just been sitting. So that's your way of pranking me, eh? Using the others? Me? Pranking? God forbid. Indeed, you got a kiss from a sweet girl thanks to me. On the cheek, but anyway. I really wanted to beat him up at that moment, but I wasn't even sure he's a physical being here. I presume this prank wasn't your last one, I said Karma. Who knows? Who knows? Isn't it fun? The pioneer laughed hard. Perhaps Professor Moriarty laughed like that, anticipating the success of his diabolical plan. You're certainly having fun, but I'm not. Relax, dude. There's almost nothing left. And here you go, your second lap. After you do a dozen, then you'll earn a pit stop. Although, you probably won't need me then. You'll figure out everything yourself. It's not like I need you right now either. Oh, what ingratitude. Just cut it out. If you'd ever... Just shut up already. No understanding. Shut your damn mouth! I screamed so loud that the walls trembled. The front door suddenly burst open and Alyssa came in. Is it just me or has someone gone completely nutty nuts? She asked with fright. Well, you could say so. I've seen you with no clothes on. I answered angrily. Why are you yelling? Because I want to. I've already realised that the accidental arrival of Alyssa was either planned by this pioneer or would be commented on by him in a manner that I'd sooner drive a pair of nails into my ears than have to hear. Have you gone psycho or something? Elisa reclined on the bed in a laid-back manner. To what do I owe the honour? I just came for the sake of it. And you're just for the here screaming. I wasn't doing anything just for the sake of it. I've got nothing better to do. I've packed my stuff. It's boring. Well, well. If you think I came here to you because... She threw an angry glance at me and turned away. I really shouldn't have come after that. After what? I haven't said a word. Of course, you thought it instead. Ah, so you can read minds now. It's no need to read your mind. It's written all over your face. It's hardly possible to read anything on my face besides fatigue and anger. And what have you read there? That's none of your business. Well, it's not like I'm holding you here. Forget it. I'll go whenever I please. Don't boss me around. Okay, stay here then, for God's sake. Anyway, I liked, uh, I liked Alyssa's company. Was 
I'm sorry, guys. I think you know the the, the spell checking guy got a bit bored at this point. Anyway, I liked Alyssa's company far more than the pioneers. I lay back and closed my eyes. It took Alyssa a few minutes to break the silence. You really don't want to tell me anything? For example? Today's the last day, after all. So you're happy? Well, she babbled uncertainly. Everyone's leaving. Good riddance. And that's all. You need something else? You don't, don't you like it here? Her voice seemed, sounded unusual. I've seen better places. Damn, you're so dumb that speaking to you is a complete waste of time. She got up and headed to the exit. Yep, good luck to you too. Elisa turned to me. Her face was writhing with anger. Could at least say that you'll miss me? Sure I will. Whip. She slammed the door loudly. Ah, <sighs> stupid. Alyssa didn't hear my last line, of course. What a wayward chick, huh? As good as you are. And you, in that case. Of course, keep comparing me to yourself. I remarked mischievously. But what's the difference? We're in the same situation. I've just been here a little longer. Well, in fact, a lot longer. And you've completely gone completely nuts. No wonder. His hoarse laughter was completely pissing me off. <laughs> Listen, I've already told you that you should be an actor. You'd do a brilliant Hannibal Lecter. Especially since you consider yourself a psychiatrist. Oh, think about it. Well, now I must go. Maybe I'll see you again. I turned to look at him, but the pioneer had already disappeared. Finally. But nevertheless, why did he come? It might be the case that me, him, and others like us are the only real people around here, but I desperately don't want to believe that. All his speech seems like some sort of a complex game. Like he's trying to give me one hint after the other, trying to lead me to something, enabling me to discover some kind of devious plot. Too bad he's not really successful at that, because I'm out of ideas. And I think we're going to have to stop there. We have gone well over the 25 minutes once again. I think all that is left is the ending. And we'll go through that and the next episode. And you guys decide to think about it before the, the next episode. Do you let me know whether you'd like me to do all the endings? Because I think it's time to make a decision. Um, I'll do speed runs through as I did with Natch Gal. Uh, won't bother narrating stuff that's done already. Just narrate the new stuff and we'll see how it goes. So let me know if you'd like to see that. So until then... I've been Simon Parsons. This has been Everlasting Summer. I've just noticed there's a bra hanging off of one of those beds. I think I know whose is whose. Thank you. And good night.